So now we're going to look at some of the defining principles of SHM. Now, if you think about an oscillating system like, <clears throat> in this case here, we have a mass on a spring, we need to think about what the force displacement relationship is for a spring. So if we say that the equilibrium position for this spring is around about here, then the force that the mass on the end here experiences is going to depend on the extension of that spring or the displacement from the equilibrium position. That is, F is equal to minus Kx. Why minus K? Well, when our mass is at the bottom here, the force is going to be pulling it in this direction, but the displacement X is in this direction, let's say negative. When it's at the top here, the force is pulling it down towards the equilibrium position, but our displacement X is positive in that direction, away from the equilibrium position. Where is the force going to be the greatest? Well, the force is going to be the greatest where the spring is either most stretched or most compressed. And that is at either of the amplitudes or the maximum displacement. Where will the acceleration be greatest? Well, we know that F is minus Kx, but we also know that F is equal to ma. So our acceleration here, with the mass remaining constant, is directly proportional to F. Now, if the force is greatest at the maximum displacement, then that means the acceleration is also greatest at the maximum displacement. What would happen at the equilibrium position? Well, the definition of an equilibrium position is it's the point at which the system will return to when it's at rest. So that means when it's at rest, there's no overall force acting on it. At the equilibrium position, there is no force, therefore no acceleration. Why does it keep moving? Well, the object has got velocity at that point. It is moving, and we'll look later on at how the velocity varies with the displacement. But the key thing here, and this is a defining feature of SHM, is that acceleration is always in the opposite direction to the displacement, or it always acts towards the equilibrium position. And the pure definition of SHM is that it's an oscillating motion in which the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. F is equal to minus Kx increase your x, you increase your force, therefore your acceleration, and it has direction in the opposite direction to the displacement. And this is the wordy definition that you should learn. As a result, because our acceleration is equal to a constant times the extension or the displacement, that constant c is minus 2 pi f squared. And we'll see in a later video where that comes from. But we could call that the SHM constant. And it does crop up again and again. So the acceleration of a mass at any point away from its equilibrium position will be equal to 2 pi times its frequency, which we can get from its time period, squared, times that extension. As a result, because 2 pi f is the same as our angular velocity, we can substitute in for this that acceleration is minus omega squared x. And so what this all means is, the shorter your time period is, the faster your oscillations will be, and as a result, you will get a greater acceleration. Now, these are the key graphs that you need to remember. We already looked in the last episode at the displacement time graph for an oscillating system. And if we're starting at maximum displacement here, we get a cos graph. Now, let's say I wanted to draw a graph of velocity against time. Well, velocity is obtained by differentiating displacement. 
and the displacement, sorry, the, uh, by differentiating a cos function, I get a minus sine function. So my graph for velocity against time is a minus sine graph. Let's say I now wanted acceleration. Well, I just have to differentiate my velocity function. So I need to differentiate my minus sine x. Differentiating minus sine x gives me a minus cos x. So those are my three main graphs, and you're expected to be able to draw these. They may be sneaky and ask you to draw a displacement and an acceleration time graph. And the trick there is don't automatically go through and just draw it shifted over. Think about what is happening with our graphs. But when you are drawing them, because each is the derivative of the next, oh sorry, of the previous one, each graph is shifted along by pi by two, or a quarter of a wavelength, to get the next graph. So if you take your displacement time graph and you shift it along by a quarter of a wavelength, you get your minus sine graph. If you take that minus sine graph and you shift it along by a quarter of a wavelength, you get your minus cos graph. 